So what do you think of natural rubber molecule? So it has double bonds. It has allylic hydrogen, allylic carbon, right? And CH3 methyl group and two hydrogens attached to the uh, carbon, which is in the double bond, right? So that is the isoprene molecule, right? So it is a polymer, right? What do you think of this? Do you think it is exactly pure? Pure is polyisoprene. If I say if I say it contains hydroxyl groups, it contains epoxy groups, right? It contains carboxylic groups because this is a natural product, right? It is a natural product, right? There are so many mutations can be there right mutations means not the genetic mutations right so normally we think cis polyisoprene is ch2 c ch3 double bond ch ch right so ch2 likewise but that is not right there are hydroxyl and there are carboxylic there are epoxy groups right like different different groups are there attached to the main chain of one for cis polyisoprene right However, this is a hydrocarbon, right, which is inside or else which is surrounded by a lipid layer and a protein layer, right, and an adjacent uh, water layer, right. This is a particle then. Inside the particle, you can see the hydrophobic rubber molecules, right. So why we call this as a colloidal system, right? It is available as colloids that's why we call it as colloidal system right so it is a stable colloidal system colloidal system so so how does it occur as a stable colloidal system it is stable how right that is a problem right so we'll see so there are different types of stabilities different types of stabilities you can see kinetic stability so kinetic stability means let's say to combine two of people right let's say a boy and a girl right i argue that they should pass an energy barrier to make a relationship they should pass an energy gap sometimes that gap is very less sometimes that gap is very high if the gap is very high it is very difficult to build up a relationship if the gap is very less, so they will merge together very easy. And also, do you know what is the activation energy of a reaction? Activation energy of a reaction, right? This is the, these are the reactants, reactants. These are the products, right? So to occur products, these reactants should take energy and pass this energy gap. Right. If they do not pass this energy gap, we will not take these products. Right. That's why kinetic is there. Right. So that is kinetics. Right. And next one is the thermodynamic stability. Right. Thermodynamic stability. Right. Thermodyne. So that's where we talk about Gibbs free energy. I think you know what is Gibbs free energy. Delta G equals the enthalpy delta H minus the temperature and entropy right so to occur a system is stable right occur a system is stable right this delta g should be equal or below zero right if this follows if this principle follows that system is more stable Right, keep those things in your mind. Right. When it comes to the latex, right? So let's say think of think this is a latex particle, right? So those are so here it is a positive charge, right? Don't mess with that, right? Here it is positive charge. If the if the surface is positively charged, the adjacent next layer is negatively charged, right? To keep the charge balance, to keep the charge balance right and also there are positive charges next to that and sometimes disperse negative charges may be there right so likewise positive layer negative layer right then dispersed dispersed 
right ions are dispersed negative charges and positive charges right because in a system both are there because of the surface potential right surface potential there is a repulsive force in between right there is a repulsive force in between that is called electrostatic uh, stability electrostatic stability right what does this mean the steric stability right so some cases right let's say we can tether some molecules right we can bond some long chain molecules onto these particles right that is called tethering right we can tether some molecules right so when these are there on the surface of these particles so can they easily merge because of these entanglements and barriers so they cannot right that is called steric stability of an emulsion or whatever system right then how many stabilities in a system kinetic thermodynamic electrostatic and steric so latex particle distribution in the water phase right so all the latex particles those are negatively charged right they are available in the water phase right in a latex system right we can see leotoid phase water phase and the rubber phase right this is the rubber rubber particles are the rubber phase right so this rubber phase is available in the water phase right dispersed in the water phase right so you can see there are collisions right and movements so particles have some velocity right so they have some attraction right so those are called van der waal attraction forces so there are van, van der waal attraction forces in between and also because of the same charge density high same charge density right so there are repulsions that is called electrostatic repulsion right so electrostatic repulsion forces are dominant than the van der waal attraction that's why you can see repulsions in between right repulsive forces electrostatic repulsions are dominant in the system compared to the van der waal attraction right as well as there are the the particles has kinetic energy so they they have a velocity right so they can move in different directions right like this different directions right so that is how so simply these are the factors that keep the latex system stable so we will consider one rubber particle one rubber particle right so this is the rubber particle so because of the proteins you can see negative charges on the rubber particle right if there are negative charges on the rubber particle the next layer is a water layer which comes from the uh, water absorbed from the soil right and which is available in the plant right so that is the water they are in around around the rubber particle right so the surface is negatively charged then the adjacent water layer should have positive charges should have positive charges right so next to next to next to next layers right the next layers right they contain both positives and negative charges right both positives and negatives right so combination right so so this rubber particle this rubber particle can attract positive charges and negative charges right so if positive charges are here there so it can attract these negative charges right if negative charges are there it can attract these positive charges right so the electric field right so electrostatic density of this rubber particle ends at this point right ends at this point so it cannot attract any any positive or negative charge beyond this layer right beyond this limit right beyond this limit right okay 
So here, this is the rubber surface, the rubber particle surface, and this layer is called the stern plane. The stern plane. This is the surface. The next layer is the stern plane, which which contains the opposite charge, which contains the opposite charge. Right? Is it clear to you? It's like sun, right? Sun is here, right? And what is the the uh, the last planet which has some attraction right which has some attraction to the sun beyond that there is no any right after the ninth planet there is no any right if pluto inakelahitu thari but pluto king heart and then that field is limited within a within a particular within particular area right so beyond that that field not work right the same thing happens here right so this is called the stern layer or stern plane right so then after the stern plane i told that so there is a positive and negative charge combination right within this electric field right within this electric field right so this is called electrical double layer because positive and negative charges both are there right therefore double layer so simply we call it as diffuse layer diffuse layer or double layer right now you know this is the surface it is negative next layer is the stern plane which is the opposite charge right next to that the electrical double layer which contains both charge combination okay okay so you know the beauty right so earlier we learned that rubber particles are moving here and there in the latex system rubber particles are moving here and there but here i will say not the rubber particle but all this complex right charges move with the particles as it travels through a medium due to brownian motion right when the particle rubber particle moves these charges are also move with this rubber particle right these particles are also these charges are also moves with this rubber particle right okay Did you understand that? Then, if somebody says rubber particles are moving here and there due to Brownian motion, you should know not only the rubber particle but also the attached charges, right, within the diffuse layer. Within the diffuse layer, right, all this section is moved here and there. due to brownian motion right so this limit this limit of this electric field exerted by this negative charges of the rubber particle is called the slipping plane right slipping plane right that is the boundary of this electrical double layer slipping plane it's like the uh ellipse of pluto right within that the gravitational field is there of the sun right the gravitational field of the sun is there available right within the sphere of the uh or the ellipse of the uh pluto right beyond that they are stop right so then we can consider that ellipse as the slipping plane of this uh solar system right like that so this is the slipping plan of this particular rubber particle right so we measure the zeta potential right considering this slipping plan right we'll see how to do it and also it is called shear plan also right shear plan both names are there right okay and let's come to the zeta potential right so why zeta potential is important then? 
so to to define the stability of a particular system right it is not enough to not enough knowing the uh, surface charge or surface charge density but it is important to know the potential of the stern plane because the particle when the particle moves right the adjacent layers containing charges are also moved with that particle right so then if we think of that particle that is not exactly that particle right the part pl particle plus the adjacent charges right charge layers right so therefore we have to consider this section right not only this particle right this section right okay see surface is negatively charged right so then the stern layer should have the opposite charges positive right so then this is the limit of the diffuse layer so then that is the slipping plane right so when the distance is increased from this from the surface of the particle right when we increase the distance right here we can see the highest potential right here somewhat right here little to that when it goes there right so when you increase the distance you can see the potential is decreased right potential is decreased right you may have learned this under electrical fields or gravitational fields in your elements also right so in the surface so this is called surface potential right measured in millivolts surface potential right the potential energy or the voltage of the stern layer is called the stern potential and the slipping plane is called the zeta potential right zeta potential zeta zeta potential right the voltage at the edge of the slipping plane with respect to the bulk medium with respect to the bulk medium is called this zeta potential right if adjacent particles right think of another particle right if adjacent particles have high zeta potential with same sign right with same sign may be positive or negative no agglomeration due to electrostatic force so you cannot find an agglomeration right it is simply if you have a same particle like this right if same particle like this so it's available here right they will not merge because of this same zeta potential here the zeta potential may be some value maybe uh, let's say 10 millivolts if the other particle has also 10 mil 10 millivolts both are plus right so then there's a big repulsion electrostatic repulsion and they cannot come together right so system is stable right so then you can measure this zeta potential and if you know the zeta potential you can directly predict that the system is stable or not did you understand that now up to up to this point what you learned all the things are qualitative all the things are qualitative you know the particles are negatively charged right so there are repulsions right and uh, because of that uh, so repulsions are occur due to electrostatic forces right so van der waal attractions are uh, not considerable right considerable enough to merge the particles right those are qualitative this is where you measure that this is where you measure that right so we have values we can measure the zeta potential right and by looking at that values we can directly and exactly uh, predict or conclude whether the system is stable or not right did you understand that yes sir 
Okay. Others? Yes, sir. We do. Yeah. So I will record this session, right? So you can have that video also, right? You can repeat it, uh, then you will get more idea, right? Okay. Then how to measure this theta potential, right? So to measure this theta potential, you have to use laser Doppler electrophoresis method, right? Laser Doppler electrophoresis method, right? So what is laser Doppler electrophoresis, LDE, right? Simply, we can have a sample of latex, right? So we can pass laser rays through that, right? And do some calculations. So it will be automatically done by the instrument then it will give you the zeta potential value right finally you will get a zeta potential value right based on that you can predict what has happened in the system and how uh, to to what extent it is stable or to what extent it is not stable like that you can predict everything right we'll see how it is done here you have the link right so you can refer this one uh, I got it from the scientific science direct, right? So you can, if you use this link, you can find that article and you can read it, right? Okay. So here you can see a light source, right? So we can pass that light source there, right? So then it will come through this sample, right? So then why we divide this light source into two? right to make sure that so, yeah so this difference. should be the reference right this for the reference right okay very good right so here we have to use these uh equations also to calculate the theta potential right which is this theta right so charge particle velocity is proportionate to their theta potential so that is the basis for lde if the charge particles are charged right uh so their charge density right charge density or the theta potential is directly proportionate right directly proportionate to their velocity right so their velocity right so particles with high theta high high potential so they move faster right they move faster right and vice versa vice versa means the other way around right if the particles has low theta potential they move slowly right they move slowly right okay we can illuminate these particles by laser right we can illuminate those particles by laser right then we can quantify their velocity right so this is this is an indirect measurement right of the particle speed using doppler frequency shift of the scattered light right so so light is scattering of this the the scattering of laser light occurs due to the particles speed right so then based on the speed we can calculate the zeta potential indirectly using these equations right here you can see this new is the uh, frequency shift right ue so it is the particles velocity here yeah, this is the particles velocity and lambda is the wavelength of the laser light right theta is the scattering angle right is the scattering angle <coughs> right okay to calculate the particle velocity right uh, if you if you know the particle velocity right we can calculate the theta potential right these are the factors right we will we will learn this right later okay so this is called the Henry's equation, right? Henry's equation. So theta potential is a physical property of the material, right? All solid liquid and liquid liquid colloidal systems show theta potential. So if somebody asks you to find a a theta potential of a liquid air, right? But it doesn't follow this, right? But solid liquid and liquid liquid colloidal systems, you can apply this theta potential, right? So how Henry equation calculate this theta potential, right? So you know UE is the electrophoretic mobility, right? Particle velocity means electrophoretic mobility, right? And this is called epsilon, right? It is the dielectric constant, right? So the, all those are measurable, right? And this is theta potential, 
what we need, right? Zeta potential, right? And we should know the viscosity of our system, right? So how do we measure this viscosity of our system? So it is a liquid-liquid system, right? Uh, rubber particles in water, liquid-liquid colloidal system. So how do we measure this viscosity? We can use Brook field, right? You know Brook field, right? And this one is a function, right? It is called Henry's function. So it is well defined. So the the system the the calculation for the calculation we can directly take it. So normally it can be one, right? Okay. So here you can see units of k are reciprocal length of the thickness of the electrical double layer, right? Here. So this is the length of the electrical double layer, right? So this is one over k. One over k is uh, the k constant that we take. So it is called the Debye length, right? Electrical double layer thickness. So we have to take one over k there, right? So a is the particle radius, right? Particle radius, and we know k a the ratio of particle radius to electrical double layer thickness, right? So here the function k a f k a is the ratio between the radius and the thickness of the electrical double layer, right? So there are polar mediums and non-polar media, right? In polar media, so maximum value of this function can be 1.5, right? 1.5 means the thickness of the double layer is less in polar media, right? In non-polar media, the thickness of double layer is high, right? So this uh, Henry's function can be one, right? Okay then we'll see how to measure it, right? So there are specific cells to measure this uh, zeta potential, right? So you can see this is the cell that we fill our colloidal system here, right? And we have to apply electrical field using these electrodes, right? You can see positive electrode and negative electrode here, right? Actually, this is a capillary, capillary tube, right? To this capillary tube, we have to fill our sample right and this is the zeta potential instrument right zeta potential instrument right so here one brand right melbourne zeta Sire, nano zsp right okay so we can load the sample here and measure the zeta potential right so in this instrument you can see laser light is there right so we have to pass that laser light here right then divide into two beams to find uh, the reference right to find out whether there are uh, noises right so and we can tear the instrument right means calibration right we can calibrate the instrument removing all the noises right now the instrument is ready to measure then we can pass this light through our colloidal system right this cell is this one right this is the cell right so then light will pass so it will indirectly measure the scattering Right, so when light hits the particles, the based on the velocity of the particles, this light will scatter, right? It scatter into different direction, right? So based on that scattering, right, uh, we can convert that uh, frequency shift uh, into electrical mobility, right? So then, so this is the data we can obtain for the mobility, right? We can obtain for the mobility, and we can ca convert this mobility into zeta potential using Henry's equation, right? Using Henry's equation, okay? But the zeta potential, we should know, it depends on the pH and salt content of the system, right? Let's say if we take the rubber latex from Mathale or Kegol area, right? And Agalavat area. So in Agalavat area, water is very good right water quality is very good right so iron content is somewhat less but uh, if you take latex from Mathaleo cable area you can see the, that soil series so it's called parabe series right which contains high calcium and uh, sometimes uh, I, I can't exactly remember the potassium is available uh, highly in 
Kegol area, but I'm not sure, right? I can't remember exactly, but I know in Mathale area, the calcium and magnesium level is high, right? So then those are the salts, right? If you take the eta potential of Agalavatta rubber latex and uh, Kegol, right? There may be difference, right? And sometimes people may add some, uh, sometimes people add urea, right? Uh, you, urea means what? Urine, right? So they can add urine to latex to increase the density. So then they can have high metrolac value, right? Then they can have some uh, more money, right? So, <laughs> so based on those also, the zeta potential can be changed, right? So then we can, we can use the zeta potential to identify whether the latex is adulterated, right? So we can do many kind of research with this zeta potential right latex quality and quality stability right different things right but when you report the zeta potential you have to mention the ph and the salt content of this material and also viscosity and uh, what we discussed here right dielectric constant those things right so to elaborate the uh, zeta potential very well it's like defining ph when you define ph if i say the pH of this water, what I am drinking, is seven. Will you agree with me? Is it scientific? It mm. is not scientific, right? I have to mention the temperature because the pH is a temperature dependent, right? So at room temperature, now the temperature is twenty-seven here. This water, uh, this water uh, has a pH around seven right 7.1 like that right so it is more elaborative right okay then we can measure the zeta potential so here you can see this this sample has negative zeta potential minus uh, 40 50 60 like that no 70 or 60 like that right minus a minus value right okay then what is isoelectric point IEP isoelectric point. So isoelectric point is the pH at which the net charge of the system becomes zero. Net charge of the system becomes zero. Right? The pH at which the zeta potential is zero or at which the net charge of the system is zero. So net charge of this, all the positives are equals to negative. Right? So net charge is zero. When the net charge is zero, particles cannot move. No repulsions, right? So they will slowly come closer and they will merge and settle, right? They will merge. That is coagulation. So what is the isoelectric point of latex at room temperature? Yes. What is the isoelectric point of latex at room temperature? It is around 4.4 pH. It's around 4.4 pH. Actually, that pH is this isoelectric point, right? 4.4. Right? If you have acidic, acidic surfaces, right? Um, the isoelectric point for acidic surfaces is below pH 7, right? And basic surfaces is uh, higher to the pH 7, right? Okay. So where the zeta potential becomes zero, the pH at that point is called the isoelectric point, right? Isoelectric point. Where the zeta potential is zero, at that point, uh, the pH of the system is taken as the isoelectric point, right? Did you understand that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So then, this is one example I took from a paper, research paper, right? So they have used low ammonia TMTD zinc oxide preserved latex and epoxide natural rubber latex and maybe concentrated epoxide natural rubber latex. Right. However, there are three latex samples which are different each other. 
right so this is the ph of the sample right and they have measured the zeta potential right they have measured the zeta potential right so at ph around 1 right around 1 the zeta potential of this epoxide natural rubber is around plus 20 uh, or 20 here maybe 30 here 25 something right 25 something plus 25 right so when we add when we increase the ph of this epoxide natural rubber latex when we increase the ph to increase the ph you have to add some bases right if you want to increase the increase the ph ph ga vedi karanna nan bases ne enno onane hari increase it right so the zeta potential is getting reduced and become zero at this point where the ph is around uh 2.5 let's say 2.5 right so then zeta potential of this one is sorry isolatory point isolatory point of this uh, latex is epoxide natural rubber is around 2.5 at a given temperature right at a given temperature right okay then for this one concentrated uh uh that cannot be concentrated that should be uh, carboxylated right this c is for carboxylated carboxylated epoxide natural rubber right carboxylated epoxide natural rubber right earlier the zeta potential is plus 40 millivolts when we add some bases right so the pH is maybe around 3.2 like that, right? Isolatory point is 3.2 something, right? At a given temperature, right? So here around 20, no? Low ammonia, right? Around 20 and isolatory point is 4.1. 4.1 okay so if i say all these are preserved latex right low ammonia epoxide carboxylate so normally we know the latex particles are negatively charged right so to preserve these to preserve these what you have to add basis no Yes, sir. Basis. Right? So these are already preserved systems. Right? So at the beginning, at the beginning, their pH may be around here 10 to 11 at the beginning. Right? At the beginning, their pH uh, may be here 10 to 11 because of the basis added, maybe ammonia potassium laureate, potassium oleate, right? Any kind of thing, right? Because these are synthetic latex, we use soaps, right? So soaps have high pH, right? Potassium oleate and or, or else we use KOH, right? KOH and soaps. Okay. Now I will take this one low ammonia TMTD preserved uh, latex, right? So I will add acids. Which acid you prefer forming? Right? I am adding forming. So then what will happen when I add forming? The pH will drop, right? pH will drop little by little, right? So when pH drops, the zeta potential will not change up to this point, right? It is not all almost changed, right? You can see it is almost similar, right? May have it in a gun, goda color, zeta potential, goda similar. What is the range? Minus 40, right? Zeta potential is minus 40. Although I add acid, 
zeta potential is, is still minus 40, right? It's still around minus 40 to 50 like that, no? Minus 50. ियोटेंशियलोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियोटेंशियो
I think it is clear to you. So in a sample, uh, are all the particles having same uh, zeta potential potential low? No. Range? It is accumulation. Okay. Right. So this will give an average. That's why we have to run at least three. Then we can average the average. Take the mean of the mean, right? Because let's say hundred particles are there in the sample, for example, right? So they those hundred have different different potentials, different slipping potential, no, right? Because this laser light measures the speed of these moving particles. Then it will be converted into the zeta potential by calculating the uh, mobility, right? Electrophoretic mobility is converted into zeta potential, right? So then um, it is an average then, right? So then we have to run at least two, three samples, right? So we have then three, three averages. So we can average those three, then take in the mean of the mean, right? So we can have a good idea, right? Did you understand that? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Then come to this point. Uh, I think you can remember I marked minus 30 in the previous graph, right? Here, right? Because of this, right? See, rubber latex maintains colloidal stability, right? If surface charges having either lower minus 30 or higher than plus 30, higher than plus 30 or minus 30 lower than that right so then to occur the rubber latex stable its zeta potential should be below minus 30 or above plus 30 if it is above plus 30 that is a good positive right so here you can remember i mark my plus 20 right plus 20 here right and minus 30 here. so minus 30 so below these ph levels right below these ph levels Latex is more stable, right? It is more stable, right? Below this pH level, it is more stable because zeta potential is, right? Zeta potential is below minus 30. It is stable. But do you think when we add acids, when we add acids, it will become this point where are the isolatory point? Then although all the rubber particles are not coagulated right we can observe all the rubber particles are not coagulated but 99 percent is coagulated but we can see some milky serum right so we will add more acid there right little bit more acid so then what will happen some rubber particles may get positive charges but their charge is also below minus below plus 30 right below plus 30 they can coagulate because those are not not stable right they are they are not stable to become positives because it has not passed the limit of plus 30 right so they can coagulate while taking time right you can see some flocculation there flocculation there right flocculated particles with the coagulate coagulum right okay this is how you have to understand this, right? You better to read this, right? So here I have two sample zeta potential values of natural rubber and chloroprene rubber lattices at various pH levels are shown in figure two. You can see the pH is here, zeta potential is here. The data indicated that the NR particle possess positive character when pH was below 4.7 pH below 4.7 means here, right here. In a mehari wagi, below 4.7. Below 4.7, NR shows positive character, right? Positive character, right? Here minus plus 30, right? But positive character, but below, below plus 30 means not stable, right? Keep it in your mind, right? Okay, then above 4.7 zeta potential was negative 
and change rapidly with increase in pH, right? So beyond this, right, the zeta potential is negative, and when you increase it, right, so the change is rapid, rapidly change, right? Rapidly changed, right? Okay. Then the curve in figure two therefore indicate amphoteric characteristic of NR. Amphoteric, amphoteric. What is amphoteric? N H uh, C R H C O O H. So amphoteric. This is amphoteric. So you talk about protein layer, right? It contains this amine, which has base, which is a base and carboxyl, this carboxylic group, which is an acidic nature. So both acidic nature and basic nature, both are there in one molecule, which is a protein, right? Protein molecule. So this can withstand against acids and against bases, right? Because of that, we can say, this shows positive and negative both, right positive stability and negative stability because of what this amphoteric nature given by the protein layer of the rubber particle did you understand that clear yes sir yeah these are from a levels right a level lo leganna gatte ameyo hari is it clear to you yes sir Yes. questions you can raise right the results confirm the presence of amino acid surface right so what i explained right but you can see the chloropene latex right chloropene latex zeta potential showed the negative value of the range of ph see it is negative over the range of ph no positive no amphoteric nature there right okay so this is because of what negatively charged possibly derived from the anionic stuff so this is the chloroprene right so this is a synthetic lattice synthetic lattice so for the synthetic lattices we use anionic surfactant mage akuru gena echara dukkenne pa ewa hema thamai man aasath na eka hadala ay lassanta liyanne hari walata onnan kola eran gilla pharmacy ekin gaha gana hari da chloroprene rubber synthetic it is a synthetic one so we have to use anionic surfactants right to stabilize the system right so it shows negative zeta potential over the range right if we further reduce the zeta potential uh, the ph right it will become here right it will become here and sometimes uh, it will it will get zeta potential zero at this point right so it has not not uh, given in this paper but up to this point it has given right okay but it is more enough right more enough to unstabilize the system if you get it here no minus 30 volt would again our 30 unstable enough right with the time it will coagulate right Okay, this is another example where what will happen? So effect of electro electrolyte on double layer thickness K, which is one over K d by length, right? Concentration of one to one electrolyte in water at twenty five Celsius. You can see everything is explained well. Temperature and concentrations, then ratios. Okay, what will happen? So here we add. Here we are going to add this uh, particular electrolyte, right? So we are going to add acids, right? Let's say acid. If this is, you can think of uh, this is uh, natural rubber, right? We can add acids. So when we add acids, what will happen to these negative charges, right? So this is the concentration of the acid, right? Minus five, which one has the lowest concentration? This one or the last one? The first one or the last one? The highest concentration? Last one. Last one. Last, yeah. one. last one, sir. Yeah, it is the highest concentration, right? High. 
uh, high concentration, right? Here, low, low concentration. So at low concentration, right, you can see the double layer thickness is high. When you increase the concentration of your electrolyte, right, you can see double layer thickness is getting reduced because of the reduction of charge density, right? So then the next one can come closer, right? When the zeta potential becomes zero, right? They will merge and coagulate, right? If it is latex, pH is 4.5 like that, 4.5, like that, room temperature, right? Okay. These are the reference. You can find some uh, more information if you follow these references.